cold. Cold showers, ice baths, and cold immersion up to the neck. I, I always uh, preface this by saying there are not a, a lot of studies. There are some, but not a lot of controlled studies looking at cold showers because it's harder to control the variables of where people stand. So I would say if you have access to a cold immersion of some sort, ice bath or cold immersion, great. But if you don't, cold showers would be the next best thing. The lore goes that if you do an ice bath or cold water immersion after strength or hypertrophy ah. training, that you are short circuiting some of that. The lore also goes that cold showers might be okay. And my interpretation of those data and that discussion is that all that is probably true, but I have a hard time imagining that the effects are so robust that it can completely prevent strength gains and mm. hypertrophy such that my stance for myself is try and do the cold exposure training away from the strength and hypertrophy training. But if you can't do it any other time, right afterward probably isn't going to throw my whole system out of whack uh, and prevent the improvements. Am I deluding myself? A um, couple of caveats here. Number one, obviously I have a personal vested interest in cold. I've been around this stuff for a long time. Um, being involved and, and being an advisor for XPT and being in this space a long time, I'm a big believer in cold, especially cold water. Deliberate cold exposure. 100%, right? So that being said, uh, I do think getting into an ice bath immediately after a hypertrophy session is getting pretty close to you just shouldn't have done the session. It is detrimental. Good to know. I wouldn't do it. I guess is the most blunt way to put it. Um, if you're like, hey, like I'm not super concerned with growing muscle and I want these other things that come with cold water immersion, fine. It's not a zero. It's not zero. It's not taking you backwards. How much does it cut you down? I don't know. We don't know. Like that'd be a difficult number to come up with. Um, is it 1% reduction? No, it's more than that. Is it 100? Not even close. I don't know where it lands though. It's enough though for me to go, in general, best practices, don't get in the ice immediately after a workout. How long should I wait? Well, in theory, the best answer we could give you would be four hours because of what we talked about earlier today of, of going, okay, immediately you've got the signaling cascade that takes seconds. You've got gene expression that's happening in this rough four-hour window. After the genes have gone off and now you're just going through the protein synthesis process, the signal's already there and it's gone back down to baseline. So then reintroducing or introducing cold here is not going to disrupt that signal. That's a very um, non-scientifically founded, because we don't know at this point at all. What is very clear though is if you get off your workout, go right into the ice, it's probably 10% attenuation of growth. I don't know, maybe more depends on the person. Some people, if you look at the individual data, it's a pretty bad. It's enough to where it's like, that. that's a really big deal. The benefits of the ice, I don't think now outweigh the benefits of, of the hypertrophy training. What about cold showers? I don't think cold showers are going to do much. Um, you, if you've been in both, you know that this is like, we're not playing the same game here. Right. An ice bath or cold water, true cold water immersion up to the neck with limbs in if for one to five minutes is a completely different stimulus than in the cold shower. Especially also compared to a similar like cryo. Right. It's not even the same, same thing here. Um, so in general, I would say don't do those cold shower. I don't really care. Can you work it out so you don't do them at the same time? That would be my hope, right? Um, I would actually prefer you do the cold before if you really had to do it. Um, Certainly will wake you up, get oh, that adrenaline yeah. burst. No, we've played with that actually years ago, um, doing that. Um, there's actually some fun stuff you can do with the endurance piece with cold stuff, but it, it's totally not feasible for most people because you get out of, you're getting water everywhere. They're going to jump on your bike and just get shit. And it's just a giant mess. It's fun. But yeah, I would say walk away from it. If you can, that's actually it's where I stand based on the data. Um, based on my intuition and, and experience, I don't, I don't think it's a good thing to do. Now, having said that, that's mostly concerned with maximizing hypertrophy. Strength, it's not as clear. There are some data to show what actual block strength adaptations, but because of what we talked about earlier, the mechanisms and the drivers are different. And so I don't think it's as big a concern um, for strength development, though I would still generally say if you can get away with staying out of the ice immediately after the workout and you can at least wait a few hours, that's the better approach. Less concerned with strength, more concerned with hypertrophy in terms of interference effect. Um, if you can do it on off days or before or any other time, that's that's the place to land. That's generally when I try to do it. Yeah. I was just kind of throwing out an extreme case because I get asked that question a lot. What about the use of uh, ice bath or cold water immersion 
or cold shower after endurance training. Okay, so a couple of interesting things here. You mentioned we don't have a tremendous amount of data on cold water immersion overall. So a lot of this is moving. Um, there have been some papers to show that cold water immersion can actually enhance mitochondrial biogenesis. And actually even for endurance stuff, it's been shown to, to cause improvement in endurance adaptations relative to not. It's not enough for me to be truly confident in that statement yet. I would like to see that repeated. Not, not that I have a problem with the paper, the methodology that they use in that particular study, but it's, it's just a, like, this is a weird thing. So I want to see this repeated more often. So I have less concern with doing it immediately post endurance because you could even argue that there may be some benefit. I don't think you need to go out of your way to try to make sure you get an ice immediately afterwards and thinking you're going to get some massive adaptation. Um, we use ice a decent amount when I can get athletes to do it. But this context is different. Number one, when we're in camp and we've got a world title fight coming up or something else, um, we've just pitched in a, in a major league baseball game. I am not concerned about hypertrophy. I'm not even concerned with strength development. I am now pushing towards recovery. There's a paradigm that I think is important with all of these things to understand, which is, are you pushing for optimization or adaptation? When you're pushing for adaptation, you don't want to block the signal for adaptation. This means less recovery, you're not going to feel as good, and you probably should be hedging towards stress. When you're pushing for optimization, it's the opposite. So if I'm in season and I had a pitcher just throw 125 pitches, I'm not trying to cause adaptation. I'm trying to recover as quickly as possible because four days from now, we got to do this again. And I got to do this across 162 games. Um, I've, you're going to play six days, five days in a PGA golf tournament, and you're going to have to do it again every week for a bunch of weeks in a row. I need recovery as fast as I possibly can. So if I'm blunting adaptation, fine. I'm not actually trying to do that. I'm trying to optimize. If you spend all of your time in one of those two areas, you're going to have problems. So you need to be judicious about thinking, is this a point in my life or training cycle that I want to cause adaptations or am I trying to optimize? You spend too much time in, in one of the other ones, again, you're going to have problems. So that's in generally how I will treat um, the ice for, for all those adaptations.